Hey, welcome. We're at Samuel 13, verses 11 through 14. We're going to read that today. Now, I didn't touch on this yesterday morning, but it was a big, giant issue. But it goes in with this one this morning. Saul, he's the king. He's not a priest. He's a king. But Saul has offered the sacrifices that Samuel was supposed to offer. Saul is not authorized to offer these sacrifices this way. So, okay, inner, inner stage left. Here comes here comes Samuel. He's just arrived. Let's see what happens next. And Samuel said, What have you done? Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at Mishmash, then I said, The Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Uh, that's a pretty firm word. You're not going to be king anymore. How about that? Try that on for size. But notice again what we have here. Uh, and let's just cut straight to the chase here. Uh, Samuel has a list of excuses, you know, dog ate my homework, you know. And, and yeah, it sounds more aggressive than that, right? The Philistines are gathered. They're coming in on every side. I've got, I had to do something. But then he comes down to this piece of the argument. I hope you were paying attention. It was at the bottom of verse 12. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. It seems like the King James Version, doesn't it say, and I forced myself? So there's there's an admission here that I did the wrong thing. I, Saul, I, King Saul, have certainly done the wrong thing. I forced myself. I had to compel myself. And yet, if he had had faith, just a little bit more faith, he would have prevailed. Samuel would have come. The history of this would have worked out perhaps totally different. Because again, what we saw at the bottom of this was, was at verse 14, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. The Lord commanded him to be commander over his people because, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded. It's very important for the human king to be under God's direct leadership. And so this has been something that's been emphasized all along the way. And now the Saul breaks it up right away. Uh, he goes beyond and he exceeds his authority. Isn't it interesting how often leaders tend almost almost always to wind up exceeding their authority. And so for Saul, it was, you know, well, I felt compelled. I just, I forced myself. He didn't have to do that, but he felt like he had to do that. Why did he feel like he had to do that? Because he was not exercising faith in God, right? God's prophet, his servant Samuel is coming. He's not coming on the time that he thought, but he's coming. God's on his throne. God wants his people to prosper. God has delivered them in the past. Isn't God within his power to keep the Philistines from attacking for a few more days, a few more hours, until Samuel arrives? So as soon as he does the wrong thing, boom, Samuel shows up. We saw that yesterday morning. And so we need to wait on the Lord. Saul got ahead of the Lord, and Saul went all wrong here, and now it's costing him his kingdom. It's going to ultimately cost him his kingdom. Although it will still be a while before we get there. But we see the die is cast, and it was just a disobedient response to God's command. Very simple. But the king has to lead in obedience. What a lesson. And then again, for us, many times we're on the point of something good, but we just don't exercise faith. We just don't go that last step, and we take the wrong line. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He'll come through. And we will learn the right lesson. Saul, sadly, teaches us. Here is a case, definitely, don't do what he did. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be men and women of faith. Help us to stretch out and trust you a little bit more, to trust you longer, to trust you harder. There's never a time to go against your command, Lord. And yet, so often, we decide that the circumstances make it okay. Well, Lord, help us to be careful there. Help us not to take the wrong steps, but instead to await your guidance. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so friend, have a wonderful day. And don't get ahead of the Lord or behind him. May his blessing be with you in this day.